two households. Both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our seed from ancient grudge, great team mutiny, where civil blood, blood civil hands, unclean, from forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventure piteous overthrows, doth with their death, bury their parents' strife, the fearful passage of their death mark, love, and the continuous of their parents' rage, which, but their children's end, not could remove, is now a two-hour traffic of our state. And with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. On my word, we'll not carry coals. No, for then we should be polars. I mean, if we be a polar, we'll draw. Aye, while you live. Draw your neck out of the collar. <laughs> I strike quickly, be moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir. To be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house will move me to stand. I'll take on the wall of any man or maid of Montague. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Tis no I am a pretty piece of flesh. Draw that tool. Here's the two thousand Montagues. Uh, my naked weapon is out. <laughs> quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn my back and run? Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law on our side. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by. Let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them as they bear it. <laughs> Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. Ah, but if you do, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Pick him to him, my master's kinsman. Yes. Better, sir. You lie. Gregory, remember thy washing blow. <laughs> Quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture, from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground. And hear the sentence of your moving prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart! Oh, 
Carl, new approach. Speak, nephew. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary, and yours close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt with his sword prepared, which, as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds, which nothing hurt with all his in scorn. As we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more and fought them hard and part, till the prince came, who parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Not an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drove me to walk abroad, where, underneath the grove of Sycamore, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was aware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the all-cheering sun should in the furthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from the light steals home my heavy son, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up the windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Oh, black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. Well, my noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Well, have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affections counselor, is to himself so secret and so close. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. Oh, see where he comes. So please, you step aside. Well, I'll know his grievance, or be much denied. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? Mm, but new struck nine. I me sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love. Out. Of love. Out of her favor, where I am in love. Alas, the love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough and cruel. Alas, that love <laughs> whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? Oh, me! Oh, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I've heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, this love I feel, but feel no love in this. <laughs> Dost thou not laugh? No, cause I rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's <laughs> transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have pressed with more of thine own. Love is a fume made with the smoke of sighs, being purged of fire, sparkling in lover's eyes, being vexed to see raging with lover's tears. Oh, what is it else? A madness most discreet. Farewell, cousin. Uh, so, I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me in sadness. Who is that you love? In sadness, cousin. I do love a woman. Oh, I aim so near when I suppose you love Ah, a right good mark, man. And she's fair, I love. A uh, right fair mark, fair cousin, soon as hit. Ah, well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow, she hath Diane's wit. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes, nor ope her lap to saint seducing gold. Oh, she's rich in beauty, only poor that when she dies, with beauty dies her store. Then she has sworn that she will still live chase. She hath, <laughs> and in that sparing makes huge waste, for beauty starved with her severity, cuts beauty off from all posterity. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. <laughs> oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, to them and other beauties. <laughs> he that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. Farewell, cuz. Thou canst not teach me to forget. Oh, okay, that doctor. Girl's dying death. The body goo is bound as well as I, and penalty alike. Tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Oh, of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you've lived it odd oh. so long, and 
Oh, oh, oh but, but now, my lord, uh, what say you to my um, suit? Uh, what say you know, what I've said before? My child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. So let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Hey, younger than she a uh, happy mother's maid. <laughs> oh, but too soon marred are those so early made. Earth has swallowed all my hopes but she. Uh, but woo her, gentle Paris, uh, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. And she agreed, uh, within her scope of choice, uh, lies my consent and fair according voice. Uh, uh, this night I hold an old accustomed feast, uh, whereto I've uh, uh, invited many a guest, uh, such as I love, and you um, among the store. Uh, one more, most welcome, makes my number more. Uh, come, uh, uh, go with me. Uh, Sirrah, uh, uh, trudge about through fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there. To them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Find them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, the tailor with his last, the fisherman with his pencil, and the painter with his net. But I am sent to find the ones whose names are here writ, and cannot find the names the writing person here hath writ. I must have learned it in good time. Man, one fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to the eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Oh, your plant and leaf is excellent for that. Uh, for what, I play thee? For your broken shin. Oh, why, Romeo, art thou mad? Oh, not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented and... <laughs> God and good fellow. God, get God. I pray, sir, can you read? Well, if I know the letters and the language. <laughs> you say honestly. Rest you, Mary. Say, fellow, I can read. <clears throat> County Anselm and his wife and daughters, Signor Martino and his lovely nieces, uh, the lady widow of Vitruvio, Signor Placentio and his uh, fair sisters, oh, Mercutio and his cousin Valentine, my uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, <coughs> Signor Valentino and his cousin Tybalt, and Lucio and the lively Helena. A fair company, a company, uh, whither should they come? Up. Whither, to supper? To our house. To whose house? To, to my master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Nay, I'll tell you without asking. My master be the great Lord Capulet, and if you be not of the house of Montague, I pray you, come and press a cup of wine. Rest you, Mary. At the same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face to some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. One fairer than my love? The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world began. You saw her fair, none else being by, herself voiced with herself in either eye. But in thy crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that I will show you, chiding at this feast. And she shall scan her will that now seems best. I will go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendors of mine own. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> Daughter, call her forth to me. Oh, no, by my mate, not a twelve year old. I call her forth. What lady bird? What lamb? Oh, God forbid, where can this girl be? What Juliet? Ju Juliet. How now, who calls? Your mother. Ugh. Madam, I am here. What is your will? Oh, this is the matter. Nurse, give us leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me, thou your sir counsel. Oh, thou knows my daughter is of a pretty age. Faith, I know her age unto an hour. She's not fourteen. Oh, 
I'll lay 14 of my teeth. Though to my teeth be it spoken, I only have four. <laughs> She's not 14. How long is a Talamis tied? Uh, fortnight and odd days. Ah, uh, even an odd of all the days in the year, from Lammas Eve at night shall she be 14. Oh, Susan, and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God, and she was too good for me. But as I said, from Lammas Eve at night shall she be 14. That shall she marry, I remember it well. Uh, tis since the earthquake now, 11 years, and she was weaned. Of all days in the year, upon that day, oh, I <laughs> for I had then laid wormwood to my oh. red dog, sitting in the sun under the doghouse. Oh, my lord and you were then in Mantua. Nay, I do bear a brain. But as I say, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dog, it <laughs> felt it bitter. <laughs> and pull out with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Since that day, it is 11 years. But then she could stand alone, eh, by the rule. She could have run, waddled all about. <laughs> For even the day before, she broke her brow. Oh, and then my husband, oh, God be with his soul, he was a merry man, took up the child. <laughs> yeah, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast no wit with thou not jewel. <laughs> but my holy dear, the pretty fool left crying and said, I <laughs> to see now how a jest thou come about. I warrant if I should live a thousand years, I never should forget it. <laughs> yeah, quoth he. That will fall upon thy back. Oh, 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 and the pretty wretch left crying. It stinted and said, I. Enough of this. I pray thee, hold thy peace. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Yet I cannot <laughs> choose but laugh to think it should leave crying and say, I. Oh. And yet it had upon its brow, oh, a bump as big as a young cockerel stone, a perilous knock. And it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, forced upon my face. Thou wilt fall backward when thou comest to He Wilt thou not? He stinted and said, I. He stinted thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Oh, peace. I've done. Oh, oh God mark thee to his grace. Thou was the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might have my wish. I might see thee married once. Mm. Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, Madame Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. Oh, an honor? Who oh, would not I thine only nurse? I would say thou hast sucked wisdom from thy teeth. <laughs> Think of marriage now. <laughs> Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus, then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. Oh, man, young lady, lady, such a man is all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Ooh. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower in faith, a very flower. Ooh. <laughs> what say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read over the volume of young Paris's face and find delight right there with beauty's pen. <laughs> Examine every married lineament and see how one another lends content. And what obscured in this fair volume lies find written in the margin in his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. No less? Nay, hey, bigger women grow by oh. men. <laughs> Speak briefly, can you like of Paris's love? I'll look to like, if looking liking move, but no more deep shall I engage mine eye than your consent to give strength to make it fly. Madam, <laughs> the guests are come, supper served up, you called, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, <laughs> and everything in extremity, I hence to wait, I beseech you follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. 
Go girl! Sing happy nights to happy days! A fingernail! Shall the speech be spoke for our excuse, or shall we on without apology? Uh, the date is out of such prolixity. We'll measure them a measure, and be gone. A torch for me. I'm not for this ambling. Being but heavy, uh, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have <laughs> you dance. <laughs> but not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar beyond the common bound. I am too sore and pierced with this shaft to soar with light feathers, and so bound I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. To sink in it do you burden love, to great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? No, it is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. Love be rough with you. Be rough with love! Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. Come, give me a case to put my visage in. A visor for a visor. What care I, what curious eye doth coat deformity? <laughs> Knock and enter, and every man betake him to his legs. Tut, done's the mouse, the constable's own word. If thou art done, we'll draw thee from the mire of, save thy reverence, Love, which thy stick is up to thy ears. Come, we bring daylight home! Nay, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay. We waste our lights in vain like lamps by day. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. Oh, and so did I. Oh, well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. Asleep in <laughs> bed where they do dream things true. Oh. Then I see Queen Mab has been with you. She's a fairy's midwife. She comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of a burgomaster. Drawn with a little team of atomies athwart men's noses while they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes are made of spinner's legs, the color of the wings of grasshoppers. The